And we're back in the gym now for the third part of the father and son get back in shape workout routine. And before we get into the actual weight training, we're going to start off with a thorough warm up using some cardio. And my favorite cardio warm up is the rower. The thing I like about the rower is it's a total body movement. It's going to engage the upper body, the lower body. You're going to get some core activation in there as well. So this is an ideal warm up to do prior to a weight training workout. If you have access to a rowing machine like this, hey, by all means, use it. Now, if you don't, then another good option that you can use is the elliptical cross trainer machine with the moving arm handles. This is a good one as well because, again, it's a total body movement. And ideally, that's what we want. We want to get some blood flow and circulation happening in all the major muscle groups. And this is just going to help to elevate your core temperature, help to limber up those joints, tendons, and ligaments, and prepare your body for the workout that's to follow. Now for the actual weight training workout, today we're going to focus on filling in the gaps. And in the previous two workouts, we did basic exercises for all the major muscle groups. So we focused on the chest and the back and the legs and, and the shoulders and, and just the big major muscle groups. Now in this workout, we're going to focus on some movement patterns that we didn't really target in those previous two workouts. One being the arms. We're going to focus on tricep isolation as well as some bicep isolation. And what we have set up here is the tricep cable push down as well as the low pulley cable curl. And we're going to work these back and forth in an alternate fashion. So doing a set of push downs and then doing a set of bicep curls and just work them back and forth for three sets each, shooting for about 15 repetitions. Going to start off light with the first set, increase the weight for each set so that by the time we get up to that third set, that's going to be where we're going to push it, but at the same time, we're not going to go crazy. Like this is a get back in shape workout routine. This isn't, you know, trying to set records or ego lifting or anything like that. This is simply trying to condition your body and build up your strength, your muscle and your work capacity so that you can handle harder and more demanding workouts later on. I mean, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make when it comes to getting back in shape and starting a new routine is they do too much too soon and push themselves too hard right from the get-go. And all that's going to do is cause unnecessary aches and pains and muscle soreness, and it's going to increase your risk of injury. And I'm telling you right now, if you get injured, that is the one thing that's going to slow your progress more than anything. I mean, if you do a set and you just do a half-ass easy set, that's not going to slow your progress, right? I mean, you can always train again the next day, even if you did an easy workout today. Even if you scrap the workout, let's just say you, you skip the workout entirely. In the greater scheme of things, that's not going to slow your progress because you can still work out the next day. But if you do too much, go too hard, and get injured, where you pull something, tear something, like snap your shit up, if, if you do something like that, that is definitely going to hinder your progress because when you're injured, you can't train. You're laid up with an injury and that could take weeks or months and in some cases you may never fully recover from it. I mean, I've got some injuries that I've had over the years and they still haunt me today, right? I'm still not fully over those injuries and some of them I've had over 10 years ago. I'm such a huge advocate of injury prevention because that is the really the only thing that can slow your progress down skipping workouts and being lazy and you know doing easy workouts well it's not optimal it's not going to hinder your progress as much as getting injured so that's why i'm such a huge advocate of injury prevention and after the tricep push downs and the bicep curls we're going to move on to some step ups and this is a phenomenal exercise for your lower body it's a very functional and practical exercise to do. And for this, all you need is a good sturdy box or an aerobic step or something like that. And you're literally just going to do step ups. So the way I recommend you do it is start with one leg and do all your repetitions leading with one leg first and then switch legs. So in this case, for example, I do 10 reps leading with my right leg and then do 10 reps leading with my left leg. And when you do it in that fashion, it helps you to develop a rhythm and a cadence as you're doing your step up. Now, one thing I wanna caution you on here is play around with the step height if possible, because depending on your height, and depending on your mobility and your flexibility, if you choose too high of a step, it can really be awkward. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to create unnecessary tension. And in this case here, when I was taking my dad through this world, he's never done step ups before. He couldn't really get the cadence in place and stuff. So it's such a simple move, 
but if you've never done it before, it can be an awkward move. And he's had some knee pain and stuff over the years as well. So we really had to be cautious with it. What we discovered is he tried doing it on the uh, the big wooden box that we're using here. And that was too high for him. So we actually set up an aerobic step. And that was the ideal height. So it was a little lower than this box. And it allowed him to do the exercise with a, a shorter range of motion. And it worked well for him. And he was able to really you know, get into the groove of the movement and feel it working. And the thing I like about it is it works each leg independently. So if you have any imbalances, like one leg is stronger than the other, this exercise will bring that to your attention and it'll help you to correct that. And ironically, most people do have one leg that's stronger than the other. I mean, just like you have one hand that's your dominant hand and is stronger, you have one leg that's your dominant leg and that's stronger. But we typically are not consciously aware of it because when it comes to your legs, it's not as obvious as it is when you're doing things with your hands. Like, I mean, you write with your, your dominant hand and things like that, it's, it's more obvious, but we have a dominant leg as well. And doing single limb exercises like this, like the step up, it'll really help to bring that to your conscious awareness. Now, as you get more comfortable with this movement, you can add resistance to it. And the easiest way is just hold a pair of dumbbells as you do your step ups. That's what I'm doing here in the video. I just grab a set of dumbbells, go through the same thing. I do all my repetitions with one leg and then do all my repetitions leading with the other leg. And I find that that just helps to keep that cadence there. It gives you that nice rhythm as you're doing the movement. And then of course, adding the dumbbells just increases the resistance and the intensity. Focus on the exercise, focus on mastering the technique first before you worry about increasing the resistance. I'd, I'd rather you do more sets and reps and build up your work capacity that way before you worry about adding resistance. And next up in the workout, we're gonna do some farmer's walk. And this is a loaded carry exercise where basically you're just gonna grab a couple dumbbells or in this case, a couple of kettlebells, just a couple heavy objects and literally walk laps back and forth the gym. And this is such a simple movement to do, but it's very functional, very practical, and it helps to engage a lot of muscle. So it's gonna to help to strengthen your spinal erectors, it's gonna to help to strengthen your trapezius, it's gonna to help to develop your grip and forearm strength, and it's also gonna to help to work the hips and the knees and the ankles and all the muscles of the lower body as you're walking with resistance. You can start off light and just get used to the exercise, but you can make this a very challenging and very intense exercise simply by lifting heavier weight. But like anything, start off light, get used to the movement, and then build up the weight gradually. Uh, we actually kept the same weight. We did multiple laps back and forth to the gym here. Uh, but if, if you want to work this in a progressive overload fashion, then by all means, you can do that. I mean, for your first workout, obviously, just start off light, get used to it. But then, just like with any other exercise, gradually build up to heavier dumbbells, heavier kettlebells. And, you know, some gyms may actually have these proper farmer's walk handles. And I actually had a video... Uh, that I shot down at the Critical Bench Compound a while back where I was using the Farmer's Walk handles. And those are like the extreme version because you can basically have unlimited weight with that. I mean, <laughs> you can load that up with, with a lot heavier than the typical dumbbells that you're going to find at your standard gym. So bottom line, Farmer's Walk, it's such a simple exercise, but it's a phenomenal functional exercise for building overall strength. After that, I'm going to do some standing calf raises to work the calves. And the key with calf raises is you want to focus on strict form and really exaggerating the range of motion. And what I mean by exaggerating the range of motion is when you do the calf raise, really let your heels sink all the way down for a full stretch in the bottom and then come all the way up on your tippy toes for a full peak contraction at the top. And this is critical for developing the calves because the calf muscle is a very tough and dense muscle and it's used to a lot of mid-range high volume training because every time you walk, every time you take a step, you're doing like a little mini calf raise in the mid-range. So if you wanna stimulate growth, you need to get outside that mid-range and that's where you get into the fully stretched position when you let your heels sink all the way down and then to the fully peak contraction position where you come all the way up on the balls of your feet on your tippy toes that's where you're going to really help to activate the calf muscles to the max. A common mistake you see a lot of guys do in the gym is they do these little short bouncy calf raises in the mid-range, and that's not really helping to spur on new growth. Obviously, it's better than nothing, but if you want to maximize calf development and you know avoid that skinny chicken leg look, you really want to focus on getting outside that mid-range and into the more extreme ranges of motion. 
Uh, we're also going to do some seated calf raise, and the same thing applies with the seated calf raise. Focus on the full stretch in the bottom, full peak contraction at the top. In order to maximize your calf development, you really need to do both a standing and a seated calf raise. You want to do a calf raise variation where you have your knees locked out, as well as a calf raise variation where you have your knees bent. And each one is going to emphasize different aspects of the calves. When you uh, do the bent knee variation, that's going to work more of the soleus muscle. And the soleus muscle is kind of like a, a muscle that's underneath. It's, it's like the, the calf muscle that's on the inside. And, and that's what you're going to work more of when you do the seated calf raise with your knees bent. And then when you do the standing calf raise with your legs locked out, that's going to focus more on the gastrocnemius, which is the, the calf muscle that's on the outside. And you want to do both variations in order to maximize the calf development. So again, focus on proper form, lifting within your means, and increase the weight gradually only if you can do so while maintaining perfect form and that strict full range of motion. Nobody gives a crap how much you can calf raise. Like for some reason, it's an ego exercise where you see guys you know, put the whole weight stack on the standing calf raise machine, or they pile on 45 pound plates on the seated calf raise. Like, I mean, nobody cares if, if you can lift a ton of weight on a calf raise if you got skinny calves. <laughs> like, it's, it's not an ego exercise. No, nobody goes around saying, hey dude, you know, what's your one rep max calf raise? Like, it's, it's not like the bench press or something like that. So with this, focus on form. Don't let your ego take over. Focus on the form and working the muscle, not working your ego. That's the most important thing when it comes to training calves. And to finish off our workout, we're gonna do some work for our core with the plank. Now the plank is such a simple exercise, but it is very effective. And the thing I like about the plank is it works the abdominals in the way that they're meant to be worked. And the abdominals are basically stabilizer muscles for your core. And that's exactly what happens here when you do the plank, is you're stabilizing your entire core. So with this particular exercise, all you have to do is get down on, on your tippy toes and on your elbows, hold your back flat, and just maintain this rigid position for as long as you can. And you're gonna feel all the muscles of your abdominals, the upper abs, the lower abs, the obliques, all this is gonna come into play as you just hold this static contraction. Now, there's different variations of the plank. Like if you want, you can even do it in a push-up position where you just hold your hands on the floor instead of your elbows and just maintain that same rigid position. That's fine as well. Uh, th there's all kinds of different plank variations that you can experiment with. But this one right here, this basic uh, on the elbows and on the tippy toes plank, this is a good one to start with. So if, if you've never done the plank before or it's been a while since you've done it, just start with this basic variation first. And to finish off the workout, we're going to do 10 minutes of post-workout cardio. And for this, I'm just going for a walk on the treadmill. Now, this is totally optional. Like, if you're pressed for time or whatever, I mean, you could skip the post-workout cardio. But if you can do it, I would highly recommend it. And the reason for this is because, one, it's going to aid with fat burning. When you do some cardio after a weight training workout, when your glycogen levels are depleted, you're more readily going to tap into burning stored body fat for fuel. Another thing that you're going to find is it's going to help to reduce muscle soreness. When you do some post-workout cardio, it helps to circulate blood flow throughout the body and helps to eliminate that lactic acid buildup that you get in the muscles. So it'll help to speed up the recovery process and help to reduce that soreness that you may experience the next day. So I would highly recommend it, but again, if, if you have to skip something, you can skip the post-workout cardio. Don't skip the warm-up, don't skip the pre-workout cardio, and don't skip your warm-up sets, but if you're gonna skip anything, you can skip the post-workout cardio. That's kind of like, in the order of importance, this is like the least important part of the workout because you know if, if you skip the post-workout cardio, it's not really gonna hinder anything, but it's a nice addition. So if you can do it, hey, by all means, go for it. And uh, again, it'll help to burn fat and reduce soreness and just make you feel better. That concludes the father and son get back in shape workout routine. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you need some help when it comes to building muscle, losing fat, and getting yourself back in shape, then I have something really cool to share with you. It is a complete training guide that I put together 
discussing how I went from fat to ripped after 40. And if you want, I'll send you a copy of this free of charge. All you have to do is head on over to my website at leehayward.com. I'll have a direct link to it down in the description and in the first comment of this video as well. But check that out. It's a free PDF ebook called How I Went From Fat to Ripped After 40. And it outlines the training and the nutrition and the lifestyle habits that I had to implement in order to lose the gut, build muscle, and get back in shape while being a busy father and not having endless time to spend in the gym and endless time to work out. So again, if you want a copy, just head to my website, leehayward.com, and you can download it free of charge.